Hello food tubers, my name is Steve Lamb, author of the River Cottage Handbook, Curing and Smoking. We're in the countdown to Christmas. Cheers. And I, today, I'm going to show you how to turn your turkey centerpiece into something moist and delicious so it doesn't dry out. We're going to build Steve Lamb's Christmas turkey brine. Right, this is really simple and it can be done in advance of Christmas Day, so no panicking. This beauty is going to be put to one side. We'll come back to that in just a few days. What I really want to concentrate on is this big comedy stog pot. What we've got going on there in the minute is just water, all right? We're going to turn it into a brine, which means we need to add in salt. A little bit of brown sugar, black peppercorns juniper berries made in the flavouring distillation process of gin. In. Gin. Open. Cheeky, but it is Christmas. That goes in. Gin without lemon, what would you say? Nice and chunky. Just in half, like that. Squeeze it a little bit. We're not bothered, Ooh, unless it gets you in the face. About the pips, in there, squeeze it, plump them in, those two as well. Done, a whole bulb of garlic, slice in half, like that. Plop those in, and some green herbs. I like rosemary, and I've got some parsley. Tarragon would do, thyme would do, whatever you fancy. The thing is, you're suiting your own Palette. So I just need to get those ingredients dissolved and getting the flavour in that liquid. So I'm just going to pop it on the stove over there. Oh, thank God for my Christmas gym membership. That's heavy. Oh. Okay, so when you do this, remember to do it in situ because it's a real hernia job just moving it from there to there. We bring it up to temperature, boiling point really, so that all of those ingredients dissolve. And here's why. And the science behind a brine is really very interesting. Uh, it, you get uh, a large amount of water and you predominantly put salt in there. Salt is the common denominator when you're curing something, as well as some other flavourings. And salt, what happens there is via a process called osmosis, which just happens to be one of my favourite exchanges in food, um, breaks from uh, single cells which are low concentration into a higher concentration and therefore the 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 wait this is very interesting the uh the the, the water that would attract bad bacteria in the turkey is uh it's it's the the positive positive you you can 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 but your turkey is much more flavorsome and moist it's absolutely fascinating Okay, so that's boiled and now we switch it off. We've got to allow that to cool down. Of course, there is a seriousness when you're making brine. Ultimately, what you want to make sure is that everything dissolves, particularly the salt. Now that must cool down, very important. You do not want to be putting fresh, raw turkey into a brine that is cooling down. Otherwise, all you're doing is creating bacteria soup. Nobody wants that for a Christmas present. Okay, food tubers, here we go. The turkey's been in this brine that has been cooled down for 48 hours. And all we need to do is take this turkey out, which will have brine in the cavity. Okay. And then we're gonna stick it in this roasting tray. I like to cook it breast side up, although some recipes say turn it over after a spell, but I'm going to keep it like this. It's a big bird. The reason why we brined it is so that it retains the moisture anyway. So, in the oven. That's gone in the oven around 220 degrees C, preheated, uh, gas mark seven, been there for about 40 minutes before we come back to it. Uh, the brine has done its job. It's completed, finished. We don't need this anymore. We're just gonna get rid of it down the sink. Okay, so this has been in for 40 minutes. Look at that color already. Lovely mahogany brown, which is fantastic. I'm gonna give it a little baste. Just putting all of those juices back over the top. Uh, but we're only a short way through the process. This will go back in the oven, which I've turned down to about 170. And this will go in for about three, three and a half hours. 
It all depends on what size the bird is, really. So, food tube is at the end of that beautiful roasting and resting at least for half an hour, 20 minutes, half an hour, you have this wonderfully presented mahogany colored juicy turkey. Oh, I can feel it, it's moist. Let's take it off like that. It smells fantastic. I can't wait any longer. It's melting. It's got all of those flavors of the turkey, but also the brine. It's moist, it's giving. It's got a really kind of stickiness on the back of my teeth. It's absolutely gorgeous. So, Christmas is here early. Of course, the turkey doesn't make Christmas on its own. Gil, Hugh, John, they'll also be making recipes, all the trimmings around this. Stay tuned. If you like this, if you try it at home, let me know how you get on. I think it's a real winner. And of course, subscribe to the YouTube channel because there's lots coming your way. Have a great Christmas. Take care.